If you are going to perform grazing incidence x-ray diffraction on smaller samples such as this or even smaller, my recommendation to make life easier would be to use double-sided tape to stick it to a slide. You would then put the slide on this piece here, which will be in the chamber. And all we really have to do is make sure that the sample is lined up with the center portion here, and then we know that the sample is lined up with the center of the x-ray beam in the chamber. Let me move this off to the side, and I'll show you where that goes later. For now, I'm just going to take my slide, I'm going to take some removable double-sided tape. I also have some permanent double-sided tape in the lab for heavier samples, but we do not want to use that for anything that is a wafer, as that will likely cause it to break as you try to remove it. When I'm preparing a piece of tape for my sample, I want to make sure that the tape is smaller than the sample, because this removable double-sided tape does create diffraction peaks if the x-ray beam hits it. I will pull out a little bit of tape. I will cut. It doesn't have to be a real big piece. The tape does a pretty good job of holding the sample in place. You might just cut off a smallish piece. Place that towards the center of the slide. Take my sample, place it right on top, making sure that I can't see any tape peeking out from beneath the sample. I can then either push down on the sides, or I can either push down with my finger on the center of the sample if that doesn't affect the sample at all. I also have Q-tips with which I can also push down on it gently to get it to stick to the tape. Before I load this into the chamber to start testing it, I typically pick it up, hold my hand underneath, and then shake the sample a little bit to see if it is going to fall off. That looks good, so we are now ready to load the sample into the chamber. What we see on the stage right now is the black ring that we use to hold the sample holder for large wafers. Right now, we need to swap this out for a different sample base. In order to do that, I will need to remove these three screws. Normally, I would put the screws here, here, and here, but this one is stripped out, so I will need to get that fixed. For right now, for my lab at least, we used this one, this one, and this one. Anytime we are dealing with anything on the goniometer, I ask that you do not apply a great deal of force. Be gentle with it. I'm going to start removing these screws. I'll hold this so that it doesn't fall. This is the sample holder I want to use. We can see that there is double-sided tape here and here. This is so that the slide will stick to the sample base. I will put my screws here, here, and here on the goniometer. I didn't tighten that first one very tight so that I can rotate it into position. I will go back and make sure that they are tight. I'm not applying a great deal of force to tighten these down, just finger tight. That's it. Again, you don't want to apply great pressure while dealing with a goniometer. Now that my sample stage is on there, I'm going to take my glass slide and make sure that the center of my sample is directly over the center of this circular piece there. I'll stick the sides of the slide to the double-sided tape there. And again, even when I am pushing down here, I am not applying a great deal of pressure. Just a little bit, just enough to get it to stick. I'm not really pressing down into this. Alternatively, you could stick that slide onto the base plate before you apply the screws, and this is just sitting on the desk. That's another option that might be a little safer, but not necessary. To remove your sample and put a new one on, just get your fingernail underneath the slide where these lines are and pry it up a little bit. Sometimes it can be a little tough. There we go. It comes off. That's it for this video. Benjamin and I thank you for watching and we hope you have a great day.